So uh, this first view is the title slide. It gives the title of the paper that's being released today in Nature Geoscience. And this is a perspective view as if we were on the ground. There's actually an orbital image, but we project it as if we're on the ground. And the, the black arrows there point to the tips of these RSL. They actually begin way up near the tops of this uh, hill here. Uh, and the, the, uh, they flow down over the bedrock. And when they flow out onto the fans at the bottom, that's where they stand out most distinctly. So these are the features we're talking about. And if I could go to the next view graph, uh, this will show you a little animated GIF that, that shows you the time sequence of, of these features. So on the left is a black and white image. This is Palakir Crater, and it's all along the uh, 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 north-facing and west-facing rim of this crater. You can see the black arrows point to, to many of these on the left. On the right is this animated GIF, and it shows the sequence where the start to form in the, the uh, Early summer, they grow either gradually, very gradually, or incrementally. Then they then they stop growing and they fade. Then they disappear. They're gone entirely for most of the Mars year. The following Mars summer, new features appear and grow that are very similar. So uh, that's the full sequence of events that we've been observing with high rise uh, over the last four years or so, and. Uh, these, these features are very sensitive to the temperature. They form at different times, at different latitudes on Mars, uh, all related to uh, the, the seasonal variations at those locations. So they're very temperature dependent, and the darkening and the temperature dependence can be explained if these are seeps of water that uh, seep through the shallow surface layer and darken the, the very surface layer. But we had no direct detection of water. That was just our best guess as to what these were.